For most of mankind's history, the past could only be examined by memory, the future by imagination, and the pace of the passing of the present measured by heartbeat, sun, and season. This is a time-lapse video which I made myself of the rising and the setting of the sun as they travel across the sky. Here you can see lights turning on as it begins to grow dark. And then small stars traveling across the sky. And then the moon. As the sun rises again, it burns away the condensation that's formed on the camera overnight and begins to illuminate the clouds. Next week, we will again be reminded of the fallen by these words written about the passing of time nearly a hundred years ago. They shall grow not old, as we are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. And at the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. The scientific age that brought about the mechanized killing which moved the poet Lawrence Binion to write these words, also brought with it photography that could capture events as they rode the conveyor belt of time. The school has a time-lapse camera which I used to take the film of the sun and the moon over Hampton Wick, and of this, chickpeas germinating and growing. And they're not getting watered over half term. <laughs> Here, animals are making sure they get sufficient food and water to stay alive. I'm sure I'm in this video somewhere, but I haven't found where yet. Here you can see the teachers sitting down to eat lunch. This was taken in the school restaurant over the course of a single day. And here you can see people returning after school. Those videos sped up time, but we can also slow time down. Here is the takeoff of a rocket I built earlier this year. The photography by my fellow speaker, Dr. De Podesta. Science has given, given us the luxury of watching the slow distortion of an apple being hit by a bullet during a fraction of a second, or of looking at sedimentary rocks and discovering precisely, without any doubt, the passage of millions of years. When Charles Darwin worked out the origin of species by natural selection, he had no access to these direct visualizations of time, and yet he conceived what has been called one of the greatest ideas in the history of science by imagining the effects of deep time on living things. He was able to picture the growth of the tree of life in his imagination, branching into new species as we today can watch a plant grow from a seed in sped up time. This is an animation which I made myself of Darwin's original drawing of the Tree of Life from his notebook. After 20 years of thinking and writing, he described all of this to the world and ended his book, The Origin of Species, with these words about how grand it was to understand <coughs> just how long life has been inhabiting this earth and how much it's changed. 
if he were speaking at this conference, I think this would be his contribution, his celebration of how much he knew. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having originally been breathed into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed laws of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved. Time is precious. Thank you for five minutes of yours.